How does it feel to be in Arizona and, and finally be out here with your new club? How's the transition going? Uh, yeah, transition is good. I'm terrible at names, but we'll get good soon, I hope. <laughs> I hope. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's been really easy. Um, you know, we're all baseball players, same thing. Um, it obviously, you know, still hurts um, just because of how close I was with everyone in Tampa and uh, how much that meant to me. But uh, definitely excited for, you know, what San Diego is going to mean to me and uh, the time that I'm going to be able to have here. And uh, definitely excited about that. But today's been really easy. Uh, I've been really comfortable. So I've been very happy with that. Anything that you're planning on doing differently this spring that you might not have done in the past simply because it was a shortened season last year and you're ramping it back up to 162? Uh, no, nah, pretty much everything's going to be uh, the same. I'm not going to really change anything uh, that I've done. Um, just the only thing I could say that is going to change is I'll be more talkative and learning my teammates and staff and, you know, getting uh, more connected with them through this month and a half. As far as that communication goes, especially with Larry Rothschild and Austin Knoll and your catching staff, have you mm -hmm. had some conversations with them about maybe some things that you're working on or how, how you want to approach batters and stuff like that? Or is that more of the topics that come up once you start actually throwing pens and uh, working? Yeah, I mean, I talked to Larry about it a good amount. Uh, I talked to Nola about it. I'm sitting down with Victor tomorrow. Um, and then the bullpen catchers have been talking to them, uh, to talk to them today. So, um, again, I'm going to get better uh, with, you know, talking to everyone, remembering all the names. Um, but I got to get their first, you know, I got to get the names down. Because if I don't remember the names, you know, they're, they're going to look at me like, yo, who's this new dude? Um, but, yeah, so I'm going to practice on learning all the names. Uh, and then, yeah, we should be good. Oh, I'm pretty sure they all know who you are. As far <laughs> as your expectations of this season, and nothing against Tampa Bay. They had their own ways of doing things. Yeah. Uh, but do you feel like there's going to be a little bit more freedom maybe for you to, to go deeper in some games? Are you looking forward to that opportunity? When you said freedom, I was like, there's no more of a place that's more free than Tampa. Um, but freedom to go deeper in the games, yeah. I mean, I talked to, uh, you know, Larry about it, Jace. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure I'm going to – it's not hard to go past five innings, so um, I'm sure I'll be able to go past that. But, again, uh, to start the season, I think, you know, it's going to be a slow build. It's not going to be something where it's like, all right, go nine innings right now. Um, it's going to be a slow build, uh, and we'll get there. I mean, we have all spring to kind of build up to that. And then, you know, probably the first month I'll be, you know, around five, six, seven innings. Uh, that's the plan, you know, uh, and then going past that afterwards. But, again, uh, I'm more focused on right now, like, feeling healthy, getting my pitches down, um, believing in, you know, the mix that I'll be able to, to do, seeing what is working right away, what's not, uh, and just kind of learning my body and learning, you know, how everything needs to happen. So once I start to learn all that, then I'll really start to focus on, like, innings and, you know, pitch number and all that. Last one for me, the National League style of, of play. Are you looking forward to hitting? Is it something that you've got to pay a little bit more attention to here in spring training and looking forward to getting your first major league hit? Uh, I mean, I'll focus mostly on pitching, you know, and securing dubs. That's going to be my main focus. Um, but, yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm not scared to swing a bat. I'm more, you know, I'm not scared to go up to the plate and swing. I'm more scared to go up there and try to bunt. Like, bunt, you know, I was taught, you know, I learned from the great Camp Murphy, we don't bunt here. So I got to learn that, you know. Once I learn how to do that, then I think I'll be solid. Cool. Thanks, Blake. <laughs> yeah, no problem. All right, next we'll go to Annie Halbern. Spring training has officially begun when there's bunting conversations. <laughs> um, Blake, with all the with all the talent and experience in this rotation, do you, as a Cy Young winner, do you still look at this and see this as beneficial as far as a growth standpoint, as far as picking each other's brains and maybe learning from some other guys um, and some of their past experiences as well? Uh, yeah, I mean, for sure. Everyone has something to offer. Everyone has something that, you know, works for them, doesn't work for them. Uh, and it could be something that could work for me or uh, won't work for me. So I I'm really, you know, I've won a Cy Young, and, and that's in the past. So I need to focus on, you know, what I can do now, what I can learn now, uh, and, you know, learning my teammates and, you know, what makes them great and seeing, you know, what can help me um, as well as learn from my coach. I mean, there's a lot. I have a lot to learn. Um, so definitely coming in here, you know, excited about, you know, all the new people that I'm going to be around and uh, be able to learn from. What specifically stands out to you about this rotation, the talent in this rotation? And is there any extra intention 
with all the noise around you guys about being one of the best in baseball to just really stay focused on, on what you bring? Uh, I mean, as long as, you know, the players and we focus on just, you know, what makes us good, there's really no pressure. I mean, I think we all know how good we can be. Um, and I think it just becomes with the belief. Once you believe in it, there's no pressure on winning or losing, you know, because then you'll expect to win if you do the things the way you know how to do them. Um, so, I mean, I just I haven't been around the team and, you know, the full team with all the guys to see, you know, how the, how the clubhouse is, how people interact. Um, so there's not a lot that I can, like, really go off of. But, you know, being able to see the guys that are here, the confidence, uh, the swag, you know, people are walking with, I mean, that's very important uh, already just to start with that. And um, that will find a way, you know, for them to, you know, create that winning atmosphere that they've already created. So um, I think there's a lot here. You know, I just got to sit down and just watch and learn and see how they do things here. And then once I get comfortable with that, and then I can really answer questions with a lot more depth. Hey, last one from me. Is there, is there nerves for, for you a little bit? Just, I mean, understandably in a new place and everything? No, nah, I'm pretty excited. Yeah, no, uh, uh, I'm not, yeah. I, I woke up really excited. Um, I, don't, I don't think I get nervous, you know. It's something new, which is exciting. And, um, you know, I get to learn a whole new atmosphere. I get to learn a lot of things. So it's something that, um, you know, I'm just super excited that, you know, they want me uh, as bad as they do. And to be here, you know, it, I'm just, I'm lucky. So I'm very happy about it. Thanks, Blake. Yeah. All right, next up, we'll go to AJ Casabo. Hi, Blake. Considering the way your uh, your season ended last year and who it ended against, are you kind of extra thrilled to be in the National League West with a chance to compete against a team like the Dodgers regularly for the division title? Yeah, I mean, I said a while ago when Boston traded Mookie, I was super excited and thank you, Boston. So now I got to face Mookie even more. Um, I'm taking my thank you back. Uh, I'm not thanking Boston anymore, but no, I mean, I'm excited. It will be fun. I'm, so, I'm really looking forward to, you know, the challenge of their lineup. Uh, they're, they're a good team. And you know, to be able to face them and compete with myself and really, you know, try to be the best I can be. Um, that team is going to do a lot of things to make me an even better pitcher. So I'm super excited that, you know, I get to, you know, pitch against them. Hopefully I get to pitch against them all, you know, every time we play them. So it's something that I look forward to um, and I really can't wait for it. So, um, yeah, I, I'm definitely excited. I know how, you know, the rivalry's been. I know it's uh, a little feisty lately, which I'm here for all of that, uh, and I'm looking forward to, you know, being a part of it. Uh, and hopefully that, you know, puts us on the winning side uh, more than not. What, what did you make of the offseason, kind of the way the Padres and the Dodgers went back and forth acquiring guys and, and what, that, what that's yeah. all been like? Well, it was cool. Um, I want both teams to be, you know, the best they can be. Um, so it was cool. The Padres, you know, they started quick. We threw some haymakers quick. Uh, and then the Dodgers, they, they followed with some big haymakers as well. So, um, you know, it's, it's exciting. It's what, you know, baseball should be about. Make the best team you could possibly make and do everything you can to win. And uh, I feel like both the teams are doing so. So it's going to be very exciting. It's going to be a fun series that, you know, everyone around the world is going to want to watch. And, that's, you know, that's what it's about. All right, next we'll go to Jeff Sanders, UT. Hey, Blake, I wanted to ask you about the changes in the baseball. Are you working with them yet? Have, have you noticed the differences? I guess they're a tad lighter. Uh, I mean, I, I haven't noticed a difference, but again, I've only played catch one day. So um, I looked at them today, but I couldn't, you know, I, I couldn't really tell. Um, I think once I throw a bullpen and I put, you know, some effort behind these pitches and I really put my whole body into a pitch, um, that's when I'll be able to see, you know, what what's, you know, moving more or if the ball's carrying more or less. Um, but it's going to it's going to take me at least a couple of weeks to really assess that. So um, I'd say I haven't seen any difference, but give me a couple of weeks and ask that question and I might have more information for you. Were you someone that, that noticed the differences over the years? Uh, yeah, I did early on, um, like when I first got called up to the next year and then even uh, when I got sent down to AAA and I saw how those balls were flying. and then, So, I mean, I've noticed it. I've been aware of it. Um, but I never really talk about it. It's just I can't – I'm not going to be able to change, 
you know, what they do with the balls. I feel like that's more of a player's union and that's their lane. My lane is just to pitch and try to be the best. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Next up, we'll go to Bryce Miller. Hey, Blake. Um, though much of it was a system philosophy thing in Tampa, um, how motivating is it to show that you can not just pitch deeper into games, but actually do it? Yeah, I think, you know, it's it's all about just what it's going to, you know, do for me internally. You know, um, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I want to see, you know, what's inside of me. And the only way to really see that is to go deep into games um, when you're starting to be a little bit more fatigued and, you know, you got to battle some things and try to be great doing so. So I think that's what I'm most excited about is I can really, you know, find out what's inside of me. And um, that's really what I'm looking forward to most. Um, I feel like that will tell me a lot and I'll learn a lot from that and I'll be able to really grow from, you know, from those experiences. So it's something that, you know, I can't really put a finger on, but it's something that I know once I go deeper into ball games, I'll become a lot better at, you know, being a complete starting pitcher. I'm health pending and if the handcuffs are off, best case scenario is on every level. How many innings in a full season do you think you're capable of pitching? Uh, Just in your head. I mean, in my head this year, I mean, I got to look at it. I was looking at it earlier, too. I got to see how many innings I threw last year with playoffs included um, to really know what's a healthy line for me to, you know, kind of hit. Um, I would say in the 150 to 180 range um, and then postseason, um, strictly just because, you know, you don't want to go from a low number of innings to 200 innings. Um, you're just the, the chance of injury is a lot higher. So. Um, I got to look at that, but again, also I got to see how I feel when the time comes, and um, that will have a lot to say too. So there's a lot of factors that will play into that, um, but I'll be talking to Larry about it, and we're going to find something that we're very comfortable with, and I'll be very honest with him. And you know, as the season goes, we'll just get better of understanding where I'm at, where I want to be, where I need to, you know, let up a little bit, and where I need to push the gas. So. It's all just, you know, off a of feel and, you know, communicating that with Larry and we'll find, you know, a good number. But I never really set an inning limit, but I have an idea. But again, if I feel great, then I'm going to keep going. Thank you. Good luck. Yep. Thank you, Bryce. Right. Next up, Jorge Camacho. <laughs> Jorge, como esta? Hi. Yeah, I ain't forget. Oh, he froze. Looks like he's frozen. Uh, we'll have to, oh, there you go. Yeah. Well, the question, uh, the question in English, uh, Blake, this is the most wonderful time of the month, the mm -hmm. first day in spring training. Yeah. Do you have any ritual or it's just like another day in this, uh, this first day for you? Uh, yeah, there's no ritual. Um, it's more like, you know, the first day is just, it's like the first day of like school type thing. You get to see all your friends again. Um, and you get a, it's like that new feel. You get to go. Uh, it's just like uh, I don't know. It's just super relieving because the off season takes so long. Um, you know, you're very excited about the off season, and then after New Year's, you're like, this off season is taking way too long. Um, and then for some reason, it starts to slowly speed up in January, and then February hits, and it like slams on the brakes and hits reverse, and like it takes forever uh, to get to this point. So. There's no real rituals. It's just the excitement and, you know, the feel of baseball is back. Um, I'm excited to meet the new teammates. There's a lot of high energy guys here. So this spring is I'm a lot more excited about. Um, I've always been excited about Tampa, but I was very comfortable. So I always knew what to expect um, here. There's a lot more. I don't know what to expect, but I know this team, uh, they have a lot of fun. They're loose. So. It's something that I'm very excited about. You know, I woke up really early today uh, before my alarm clock just because I was, like, I was ready to be here. So, um, yeah, I mean, just the excitement of being a Padre and, you know, walking in, that, that's something that is very special to me. All right, and if I may, uh, yeah, after the, after the work or make the bullpen with the catcher, how do you like to meet better your catchers, your teammates in, in the spring training? So how do I like to like communicate with my catchers better or? Yeah. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's all – I mean, these guys, they're very smart. That's the one thing I've noticed. Um, it's going to be fun to, you know, go into battle with them. Um, they're both very aware of, you know, they're, they're, they're pitcher friendly. They're, they're not focused on their hitting and their numbers and getting their hands through and all this stuff. They're, they're focused on, you know, getting, getting outs and helping the team win that way, which is – I mean, it's huge. Um, so I was able to talk to Nola for about an hour, uh, and that was amazing. Guys, super smart. Um, very educated, understands the game very well. Uh, and Caratini, I get to talk to tomorrow. So we just talked uh, after I played catch. We said we're going to sit down and talk about things um, tomorrow, which, you know, I'm, I'm very excited about. You, uh, you Darvish is obviously super high on him. So uh, I'm very excited to see, you know, why he's so high on him. And, I mean, already just talking to him, the a little amount that I was able to talk to him, I mean, He's a very bright, very bright man. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. The two catchers that we have here, you know, they, they're, they're more uh, on the veteran side and they, they know what they're doing behind the plate. So it's going to be a lot, a lot of fun to work and kind of go back and forth with on, you know, how I, how I know myself and then what they see and how that can help me, you know, grow throughout uh, spring and the games and, and so forth. So I think, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun being able to get uh, comfortable with those guys. Thank you. Yep. All right, we have time for a few more. We'll go to Annie McCullough. Hey, Blake. How's it going? Good. Um, I had a question about one of your former teammates, uh, Tyler Glasnow. Mm -hmm. um, I was just curious, how did you see him progress over your time together with him in Tampa, and how prepared do you think he is to kind of take over as the number one guy in the staff? Uh, yeah, Glasnow. Uh, I mean, he's going to be good, man. He, he has all the stuff to be great. Uh, he works his butt off. Um, I mean, it's all it's all just, you know, trial and error and, and failing and, and what you can do from that. So, I mean, the stuff's there. Um, he just has to really put it all together. I mean, and there's days where he does and you see just how dominant he can be. But the consistency in doing so, if he can find that out, I mean, the dude's electric. So if he's able to do that, I mean, he's going to dominate. But again, he has Kyle Snyder, so I'm not, you know, I'm not worried about how much, you know, he's going to grow through uh, spring training, how he, how much he's grown through the off season. Um, so I mean, he's going to be, he's going to be fine. I think he could really dominate the league, um, but he just has to believe in himself, and you know, he has Kyle there to guide him, which is very, I think it's very important. I know what Kyle's meant to me, so um, yeah, it's going to be fun to see him, you know, make more strides this year. And they have some veteran pitchers over there that they just acquired. So those guys will be able to help too. So there's a lot of angles that can help. It's all, you know, up to him on how willing he is to, you know, open open up to, you know, hearing what they have to say and what he can learn from that. And that will, you know, tell you how much he'll be able to grow this season. Thank you. Yep. And next we'll go to Darnay Tripp. Hey, Blake. Good to see you. I hope you're doing well. I'm um, good. I want to, you know, it seems like, Baseball is kind of embracing, you know, some of these personalities a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, you're obviously on a team with a lot of that and a lot of excitement. You mentioned the Dodger rivalry. You know, they had some mm -hmm. dust-ups. You know how it can be on the field from that standpoint. Yeah. Then they had a guy like Bauer. Just with mm -hmm. a high-profile rivalry like that, with all the personalities, yourself yeah. included, like how good can that be for the game of baseball and continuing to kind of push that forward? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's huge, you know. Um, just the fans now, they, they want they want more excitement than anything. Um, baseball is, you know, you got to understand the game to really enjoy and get excitement out of it that way. But when the players are doing bat flips and, you know, they're, they're kind of just being themselves and having their own identity and, you know, they're swagging out in their own way, however you want to, you know, word that, um, it brings a lot of fun and excitement and it brings people back to want to watch those people. Um, and I think the most important thing is we have a team with guys that, you know, they play 100% every game. So when fans come to these games, they're not getting cheated on anything. That, the players here are going to give you everything they got. And I think that's the most important thing. Um, but, I mean, that rivalry is going to be yeah, – it's, it's only getting better. Uh, I'm already looking forward to it. I can't wait to play the Dodgers. Um, they're, they're talented beyond belief. We're talented beyond belief. And it's only going to prepare both teams that much more for, you know, the postseason that both of us, you know, want to make. So I'm very, very excited and looking forward to it. But I think, you know, for the fans, 
these two teams have a lot of personalities, and that's that's why a lot of people are going to tune into to the games because it's just going to be a lot of fun every game. Thanks, Blake. Good luck yeah. this spring. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, we do two more. Marty Caswell. Hi, Blake. Just going off what you just Donate just asked you um, with the addition of, of uh, Trevor Bauer to the Dodgers, how do you think the Padres' rotation stack up stacks up with the, what the Dodgers have? Well, I'm going to pick our team over them every time, so I think we stack up great. Um, but yeah, I mean, they, they got, I mean, they got Bueller, Kershaw, uh, Bauer, of course, and, it, and May's going to be really good. I mean, they got arms over there. Um, I'm probably forgetting people, no disrespect to them, but they, they, they got dudes. So, um, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun, you know, uh, going against them, starter versus starter, bullpen versus bullpen. Um, but I'm picking my team every time. I, I don't play to lose, so I think we stack up great. And what's the most valuable intel you've gotten on San Diego from, from Tommy Pham? Uh, food's good here. Um, city's good. What else have I asked him? Tommy's a funny dude. He just want to talk baseball all day long. So when I ask him questions, he'll like kind of answer it and then go back into like the analytics and hitting and hands and all that stuff that he loves to talk about. But I just ask, like, how's the food? How's the city? How's the vibe? Like, is it a place I like? He knows me uh, very well um, and stuff like that. So he just kind of told me that I really love the city. It's my speed. Um, so that's what I'm looking forward to. Thank you. Mm -hmm. well, last up, we'll go to Dennis Lynn. Hey, Blake. It looks like based on the numbers, you were a pretty good hitter at Sherwood High School. Hype me up. Walk. Come on. <laughs> Uh, but since it's been a few years, I'm assuming there isn't a late deal in spring training to bring the universal DH back to uh, the NL. Yeah. You know, you talked about wanting to get your bunting down um, this well, spring. But... Let's just start with this. You know, Kevin Long came out and did a camp in Seattle with me, and maybe I might have learned some pointers on how to hit. So who knows? We'll see what I bring to the plate. I can promise you it's going to be a smile. Um, but we'll see. I mean, I was good in high school, but that was 10 years ago, and that was against people throwing 85. <laughs> so we'll see what I'm able to do, uh, you know, this year. But I'm confident in myself, confident in my swing, confident um, really in just me as a human. So I'm looking forward to it, and I think hitting going to be a lot of fun. It's new. So maybe I'll ask Machado and Tatis for some tips. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. But just um, on a related topic, with all this uncertainty about workloads for pitchers after 60 games last year, and mm -hmm. now having possibly hitting on top of that for the starters in the NL, are you personally hoping that the DH comes back somehow before opening day? I mean, I prefer the DH because it's another, you know, talented hitter that's hitting. Um, but I don't mind facing a pitcher. I mean, I think that's a thank you. I appreciate that. Unless it's Bumgarner. Sorry, he can swing it. Grinky can swing it, you know. But I, I'd rather play, face them than a hitter. Then a DH who's usually going to be one of your better hitters anyway. So uh, I'm looking forward to it, but I'm going to give you a secret. My approach is the other way. I'm just going to try to pepper it over there. That's it. I'm not going to turn on nothing. So don't look for no home runs out of me. We singles over here. <laughs>